women at the top. Yeah, I, I agree with you. In fact, um, you you would completely agree with this. But the kind of funding that women entrepreneurs or entrepreneurs yeah. that are led like entrepreneurships that are led by females is far lesser than what men get. And it's globally. It's Silicon Valley all the way down to India and the venture funding that happens here. Um, and it's been proven, like you said, that like there was a study that was done which said that women who have more executives and, and board members, those companies have 74% or something more return on equity. So, I mean, there's data to prove it, but the thinking and the mindset needs to start moving beyond that. And the other thing that starts to happen is then a lot of the women who are, so there, I mean, we're a bunch of outspoken, fearless women out here, but there are a lot of women who sort of then go into their shell. And then you get the imposter complex, you know, where you're like, am I even in the right place? Am I, and there's a lot of self-doubt, there's a lot of self-esteem challenges where you, when you're alone in the boardroom or you're alone in a big group full of men where you really wouldn't necessarily want to speak out and you just want to sort of settle in and belong rather than make a name or have your point of view but out there. But then maybe she's not supposed to be there. I, my, like, I agree with a lot of yeah. things that you say, but then I have this feeling that if I feel so insecure and if I feel so in my shell, then maybe I should grow a pair yeah. <laughs> and speak up yeah. because a lot of people don't do that. Mm -hmm. and. I think when you're speaking or, or anybody here is speaking, it's yes. because we have figured out how to speak out. Yes. And yes. you know, that woman that's sitting in, in that boardroom and going, oh, I'm so scared to speak, or I have this issue, let me tell you, in my household all the time. These women who work around Well, we all sat there and got an injection and saw the doctor, but why <laughs> didn't you speak up? And I say this yeah. to women all the time, but yeah. that sort of mentality, I feel so yeah. hard to change. Now, Correct. what are the steps in your opinion? How do you change that? So, firstly, I feel it's, so going back to why, like a lot of it is societal conditioning um, of how, as a society, women are not necessarily meant to be heard. And that's something that over the years and with movements like Me Too, sort of a lot more women sort of speak up, feel like this is what I'm worth and I should be there and speak about it. And I feel like the more we sort of facilitate movements and platforms like that, the more women who definitely deserve to be where they are feel far more self-assured to go out there and do a lot more. And I feel role models, like you said, right? Having a book like, say, Lean In by Sheryl Sandberg, got a whole lot more women to say, okay, I can be ambitious without being considered bossy in the boardroom. And a lot of it is, I, I feel very, very strong conditioning. Like, I think we're fortunate to be from families which are fairly liberal about these things. Um, but to fight that, you do need strength. Um, and it either comes from a sisterhood or a team that supports you the whole way through. Sure. So, so, woman, I, so, so if a woman little, is stuck yes. in a room and it's just her and five men, does she not feel that validation of sitting there? Or does she still feel scared? What does she do to grow out of that? You're absolutely right, Sunny. Actually, the thing is, this is not something that plagues women alone. Yeah. This is actually personality types. Because what you're talking about is the ability to have... Um, you know, the ability to speak up. It's about having the confidence of knowing that if I have a point of view, I must put it out there. You know, there's doctors in the room, you didn't speak up for 30 minutes, for God's sake, when the doctor was there, why didn't you speak? Oh, I was feeling very shy. I didn't know how to talk about this. What would he think about blah? But this is not something that plagues women alone. There are enough number of introvert men as well. I think this is more a personality type. And the problem is that when we have discussions like these, it is not about specifically only addressing women. It's actually about addressing the need for having diverse opinions yeah. and the need for respecting. Like you talked about that uh, you know, case in your office about this uh, person who's Transition. going through a yeah. sex change. But the ability for us to collectively respect and give dignity 
to diverse opinions because everybody doesn't have to be oh i'm out there and i have the ability to sit on stage and talk everybody doesn't need to be but everybody has something to contribute and we must be able to respect that and get the best from everyone sure uh, i know i said i was nervous and thanks for kind of taking taking the <laughs> stage completely uh, which is lovely uh, you know i have i have a question because i've been thinking about this and i i look at you know women from varied walks of life and i do feel the intensity of discrimination kind of differs based on the field that you choose. You spoke about new age companies, you spoke about you know, modern day work environments. Do you feel that the field that you choose also defines the intensity of the discrimination? Like for example, in the movies, you know, where, you, where it is uh, so widespread, and we've had a movement where the women have come out and they've spoken so extensively about the kind of discrimination that you know, they've faced. Uh, do you really feel that you know, there are modern day environments that are basically far more conducive to merit driven ecosystems where discrimination is not really as prevalent as you would find in traditional environments? So, okay, I was just doing some reading up on this and uh, there is like traditional women kind of uh, fields like nursing and all. That's where they say that the men take the glass mm -hmm. elevator mm -hmm. and women still get stuck with the glass ceiling. Okay. So, even in the traditional, like even if it's like cooking, like chefs, you'll see more chef who are male in a traditional so-called female domain. You'll know far more Michelin level chefs who are guys than who are women. So I think it's a society thing, it's a mindset thing. It is also that because of various reasons, women start dropping off at the middle level. So just very few of us reach really to the top level and coupled with the fact that there are few of us at the top and sometimes they say that a woman is a woman's worst enemy. So, you know, touching up on a very raw nerve here. But uh, there are times when, you know, people really uh, try to play the politics between women and, you know, just somewhere doesn't add up. Sure. So, I really don't think it's uh, to do with domain. Again, another statistic which I saw, I mean, not really numbers here, but Glass ceiling also exists for minorities. So if you look at Asians in, let's say, US, but even the men there will do better than the women. So women, white is okay. Men, non-white is okay. Women, non-white. No? Look, Santa. Sunny over here. Sunny over here. Sunny my association with Potterfly and Summer is um, something that took a little bit of time for us to figure out what we were going to do. And I know they had a, um, a vision and a direction they wanted to go and I'm happy that we were all on the same page of um, being able to create great content and create content that I believe people would be interested in uh, and, and content that felt real. That, that's what was important to me. Absolutely. Okay, how did Sunny came into your mind for the... SLS Hello! Stage? Isn't that every day? Everybody is <laughs> like, I'm on their mind. No, I'm just kidding. I don't think it's tough for Sunny to come into anyone's mind for that matter of fact. She's top of the mind recall, clearly. Uh, but I think, you know, when you are kind of looking at Horrorfly, and Horrorfly is a fashion beauty portal that kind of, like Sunny said, talks to real women for real issues. Uh, and who better than, you know, Sunny to kind of reflect and kind of talk about real issues and real women because she's had such an interesting life where she's kind of led it with utmost dignity and respect. Uh, so we saw that marriage happening absolutely beautifully. Okay. Uh, Sunny, tell us, uh, uh, like, how was it associating with him and uh, all? Uh, the association is absolutely amazing. Um, I think that when you can have an association with a company and be able to be on the same page and have the same concerns and be able to be open to suggestions or different ideas. Um, as most people must know, I'm pretty opinionated and, you know, it's even though I'd like it to be my way or the highway, um, <laughs> I know that that can't happen and it has to be a give and take and I think 
that everything that we've shot so far um, has been something that we've agreed on that it should feel like we're making great content and, and I think that's what's most important. Yeah. Sunny, how do you feel you are good in business like shooting as a business woman? How do you handle that? Um, I, well, I think every company is different, and I, both Daniel and I have a no bullshit approach for a lot of different things. Everything's pretty black and white, straightforward. Um, we don't believe in the idea of making people run around in circles. I think your our deal is pretty pretty easy. Yeah, absolutely. Was, <laughs> and and they usually are. And as far as you know, our employees go and everybody, we just believe that everybody should work hard. And I know what I put into my day, and I expect the same thing from my employees. And that's it. Sunny, uh, last question. I don't think it's about what somebody's done or what somebody hasn't done. I think this is about taking ideas that maybe have been spoken about before and giving it our own spin, our own thought, my own opinion of, of those things and, and their statistics and their opinions of how it should be shot and, and things that we should talk about. Um, I believe that the biggest thing for myself um, was that it should feel real. It should feel like if anybody could go out and do the things that you know we're talking about and or or providing the steps of how that woman can can accomplish these things. Are you talking about Bollywood? Are like you talking about equality? Like maybe you're talking about gender equality in Bollywood? Do you see the the actors like going as that kind of a equality? Well, I think that each each actor is different. Um, I do believe that there are differences. As far as myself goes, I I can only speak about my own experiences when I, and what I've gone through, and it's not been easy. I had I've had to create my own path, and my team and Daniel and everybody. We have to fight tooth and nail to do everything that we want to. Um, do I have the best of lineup when I have a film coming out? Do I work with those big A-list actors? No, but I create my own path and I make my own decisions and I'm happy for that. And I'm happy that I'm able to do things my way, and which is the most important to me. No one's telling me what to do, and I like that. Okay, so you have talked about the Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sunny Day is yours. What do you do to beat the sun? Wait, what? Sunny Day is, I need mean, to say, it's hot outside. It's hot outside? Yeah. Last question, guys. <laughs> So, what am I doing to beat yeah. the sun? I don't know. I'm going to Rajasthan for a month. I'm going to be in the sun every single day. That's going to be a very good question. Um, but if I had to say something, it would be coconut water. It would be a lot of light food, not fried stuff, and uh, light clothing, nothing too heavy and um, that would